Thank you, thank you. I'm very glad I have the chance to speak to you, to the audience. And first, I would like to inform you that uh, the organizers have, have promised to me that my speech would not replace the lunch. <laughs> but nevertheless, I should uh, speed up a little bit. Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, usually it is worth to use a, personally, a personality as a shield when having a speech. I have chosen Henry Kissinger and I quote him from his book World Order as a motto. Uh, the quotation uh, is as follows, Henry Kissinger, uh, history does not give relief to any countries that drop down their commitments or their identity con consciousness so that they may get on a less demanding road. The countries do not, should not do it. The identity consciousness of countries uh, may be expressed in other words as the culture of those countries. Henry Kissinger, an expert in history, recommends us to keep our identities, to keep our uh, cultures, as Mr. President has told shortly. Uh, uh, Henry Kissinger, an expert in history, uh, recommends us uh, to keep our identities. It means to uh, keep our cultures. We should find a number of examples in the history how negative was the position of countries or nations that did not stick to their countries, cultures. In literature, an example of a convulsion in history of Persian Empire or current Iran is mentioned. During the whole ancient era, it used to be the antipole of the Roman Empire, even won many battles over Roman army. Persia was conquered by primitive desert tribes of Berbers in the 7th century, and very quickly its original religion was replaced by an, by an enforced Islam. Persia adopted the Islam, and we may consider it as, as a compromise that Shia Islam was implemented in, in Iran and not Sunni Islam. Persia, but, but Persia could never win its original influence of power back. Simply said, to keep one's culture pays off. Uh, uh, by, by the way, in the Pergamon Museum here in Berlin, you, you can see and read quite a lot of about uh, history of Persia. The captives of terrorist Islamic State are dressed in orange overalls before their execution, the same as to those worn by prisoners in Guantanamo prison. The Islamic State beheads its prisoners right in front of the camera. In Arabic countries, there are photos circulating of American soldiers with beheaded Vietnamese partisans in the 60s, last century, in the Vietnam War. On another photo, there are French soldiers in the Algerian, Algerian War in the 1950s, posing in front of a pile of cut-off heads of Algerian fighters. So you would see how it is dangerous to, <laughs> to cut up heads. Historical documents, but also the artistic literature proves that people always thought there were human rights that should not have been limited. Achilles respected the right of Hector's father to bury the body of his killed son. The competition in increasing the violence and atrocities, however, led people to improve protection of those rights that should be respected and preserved. The atrocities of the World War II led to the adoption of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights by the United Nations General Assembly in 1948. Charter 77, the dissident association in former Czechoslovakia, directly appealed to human rights. 
the significance of Solzhenitsyn's the Gulag Archipelago in the fall of communism is well known. After that, the Cold War was over and human rights protection started to live its second life. During the Cold War, human rights were used as a tool to protect actually persecuted people. The communist regime opponents appealed to the covenant on human rights. After the end of the Cold War, globalization spread in the victorious Western world and a kind of global and un, uh, unified idea of human rights gradually became part of it. The first problem that became an obstacle of, uh, to the, the new idea of human rights was was the question what the human rights are. Are these the rights that developed during the centuries in a certain cu cultural environment, mostly related to the religion, and are they also going to change little by little? The second idea of human rights stated that human rights have been changing rather quickly under the influence of changing social conditions. This is how during about 10 years of the right of the women to an abortion, the theory of practice on gender issues, or the right to transfer one's own culture to all the world became human right. This led to para paradoxical consequences. The riotous actions of mostly young immigrants from Arab, Arab countries on the New Year's Eve in Cologne in Germany last year are well known. Pursuant to the European laws, these were clear disturbances, sexual assaults, or maybe also other breaches of law. Should this be committed by young German, they would be prosecuted and, and unquestionably some of them also convicted. Young perpetrators from the Middle East, however, defended themselves, claiming that such behavior is part of their culture, that they arrived to Germany because of the war in their countries, in fact, on the invitation of the German chancellor, and they were not aware of doing something wrong. As far as I know, there was no criminal prosecution against any, any of them. Human rights pro protection got suddenly new dimension and new questions were asked. At the beginning of 1990s, the unipolar world was created having the, its pole in the United States and the globalization was launched. It had its economic and political dimension, but also the human rights dimension. At international conferences, on, for example, on women in Beijing and, or Cairo in the 90s, and undoubtedly also on, at other similar conferences, the Western human rights concept was enforced. It was used as a complementary argument also when justifying the interests in uh, the interference in internal affairs of other countries, I, at least I know about Poland. Uh, the complementary argument used to justify, for example, the, the invasion to Afghanistan in 2001, uh, that it was the need to implement the right of women to education in that country and other rights too. We all undoubtedly support the right of women to education, but uh, the reality is that is today that Taliban is in power in large part of the territory of Afghanistan. The argument on human rights, including also political rights, was used by the Western countries to support the Arab Spring. From the point of view of the West, the goals of people demonstrating were correct, but the result of the Arab, Arab Spring are poor. Libya as a United State disintegrated. The war in Syria is going on with hundreds of thousands of killed. In Iraq, there are hundreds of thousands of victims and its future is doubtable. doubtable. 
In each Egypt and Tunisia, the situation is the same as prior to the Arab Spring, and it has been the better solution. Arab countries where the Arab Spring did not arrive, as Morocco or Saudi, or Saudi Arabia, are in the best, pos uh, best position. Globalization took only part on hum of human rights over the part adopted by the liberal part of Western societies. Notwithstanding the fact that both in the European West and North America, for example, for example, the conservative part of the societies did not identify with it, with this, this kind of uh, human rights. It seems that the monopolar arrangement of the world led to an ex excessive self-confidence of Western societies, also in relation to general validity of Western concept on human rights. Consequences are visible in Western societies, too. In many important countries of the Western world, the so-called far-right far political parties appeared and grow, parties refusing not only the current economic and political arrangements of the world, but also the Western concept of human rights. Even Germany, this uh, Alternative für Deutschland, France, Marine Le Pen, and other countries. The result of presidential election in, in the USA has got a symbolic char character for the whole Western world. Would the result of these internal shakeouts in Western countries be only the comeback to human rights enforcement from using political and military means to, to the cultural diplomacy, it would be the most painless result. The unipolar world has changed to at least, to at least three polar, USA, USA, China, Russia. China and Russia should not allow the West to dictate them their human rights concept, not through the culture and definitely not by military means. We may use an example that in Russia, the, the federal law of Russia has been applied already for some years, prohibiting promotion of homosexuality protecting children in this way. Gay pride marches in Russia cannot be organized in Russia. China and Russia are ready to support movements resisting the, the expansion of Western human rights concept out of their own borders as well. Syria is a tragic example. It is an opportunity for the Western human rights concept to come back to its roots. It is an opportunity to contemplate in our own in our own human rights and our culture in which we, we were brought up. Ten Commandments are the key concept in the European culture. Christianity developed from Ten Commandments with a key symbol of the cross. But there are well-known examples of women who lost their jobs in Europe for wearing a gold cross ne necklace in European countries, at least I know about uh, such cases in the UK. France has already been trying to embed, to embed its culture with the legacy of the French Revolution for, for 200 years, but with disputable results till now. Slovakia, my country, is more or less a comical, comical example. The Slovak constitution claims that Slovakia does, does not ad adhere to any religion, and all religions, similarly as the secular philosophy with no relationship to any religion, have the same position. But when the EU wanted to Im impose refugee relocation quotas, has been told about it, on its member states one year ago, to accept migrants from the Middle East, Slovakia declared to be ready to accept only Christians from this, among these migrants. As there are cases not known of terrorist attacks carried out by Middle East Christians. This Slovak attitude raised criticism in the EU. 
Another impulse came from Slovakia about two weeks ago. The Slovak Prime Minister, being a chairman of a political party with social democratic orientation at the same time, invited sister, par sister parties of socialist orientation at the meeting of the Socialist International not to substitute their social programs with a program of liberal human rights concept. Today, there are almost no differences between social and economic programs of socialist and conservative parties, and therefore some socialist parties have become most loud supporters of LGBTI program, gender ideology, etc. In the USA, sending Christmas greetings is not politically correct anymore. One sends season's greetings. By the way, in Berlin, yesterday I've, I've seen uh, on Unter den Linden Mercedes um, office, there is also only season's greetings not Christmas greetings. About 15 years ago, I took part in lawyers' days in Germany. There was a discussion whether, an, whether the Islamic law, Sharia law, should become a part of the German law system in the field of family. I do not know how far the discussion developed since then, but from the point of view of the European culture, it was a defensive discussion. Also from the point of view of human rights concept, it is related to the fact that the, border, that the borders among cultures mingle, mix. And in this way, also the borders of human rights, rights mix. In Germany, there were cases when the family forced, uh, uh, family of uh, Islam, uh, some Turks living in, in uh, Germany, forced their daughter to, ma to marry a man chosen to, to her according to the Islamic law. It is a phenomenon Europe has got many experiences with. It's called multiculturalism. It has uh, got a pejorative name of multiculti, and especially in Germany, most loud voices appear, uh, appear that multiculturalism failed. The conferences, for, as for example this, our conference, do not deal with the issues of cultural, di uh, cultural diplomacy and human rights support right now as it happens at the borders of Europe and on the sea surrounding it. Hundreds of thousands of migrants have been arriving to Europe from North, uh, North Africa and the Middle East. Also one million, uh, not, not, uh, a little bit less than in previous year, in this year uh, have, come, have arrived uh, again. Still, the number is too high compared to the will of Europe to accept those migrants and small compared to the ability of Europe to solve the migration problem. I add, I think that the uh, issue of accepting migrants to Europe is connected with the issue of stopping the war uh, in the Middle East. There, there are pushing migrants uh, to Europe. And without, without stopping the war and without stopping the uh, flow of migrants to Europe cannot be solved the, say, quota system or, or uh, something like, like that in, in Europe. On the one hand, there is a UN analysis according to which 164 million migra migrants shall reach developed countries in Europe and North America till the end of this century. It is more than one million for year. Can, can you Im imagine? On the other hand, there is a problem of the attempt to apply the European hum human rights concept automatically in relation to the countries of North America and the Middle East, what results in an increased influx of migrants to Europe? In today's German newspaper, Die Welt, is the article how uh, <laughs> dreams are in Afghanistan among people, how good is it in Germany? And Germany is sending them back to, then back to Kabul. In 2011, France 
and UK, breached the, breached the UN Security Council resolution on a no-fly zone over Libya. Security Council allowed only no-fly zone in Libya. But they intervened in the civil war in Libya, and since then, streams of migrants coming from Libya to Europe multiplied. They did not say uh, sorry about their, their, their politics of that time. The West launched the war against Iraq on the basis of misleading data on weapons of ma ma mass de destruction in that country. It seems the war in Syria shall be ended only through the policy against terrorism of the new American president. I, th I think that the uh, election of uh, Donald Trump is a good news for Europe because only he could together with Assad and Russia and Kurds and etc., cetera, uh, end the war in Syria and in that way stop the flu uh, influ influx of uh, migrants to Europe. The agreement with Turkey to hold back migrants in Turkey is very weak. Migrants sail to Europe in rubber boats and thousands of them drown in sea every year. The migrants camps in Europe, Africa, and the Middle East, and thousands of drones in the sea, on the sea bottom, bring also our discussion on human rights to a new level. Academic discussion is not enough. Not enough in, in a nice room to discuss in acad academic terms about human, human rights, human rights. Especially Europe has to do everything to end wars in the Middle East and North, North Africa. Cultural diplomacy, diplomacy has to be implemented in solving this problem. Please tell in what kind uh, other than war and then uh, military victory over Islamic State can be the war stopped. Please then in discussion you may say. Uh, Cultural diplomacy has to be implemented in solving this problem, not only outwards toward other cultures with different human rights, but also inwards in, in our own culture. We should clarify which human rights of the migrants arriving to Europe are to be respected. But to make it also clear that transferring their whole culture to Europe is not their human right. The events of, on uh, New Year's Eve in Cologne cannot be repeated. By reaching European coast, they overcome an important border, but that border imposes certain requirements on them as well. All this is the content of our discussion on human rights. The world has been watching us what our discussion will be like. Europe, another time in its history, has no capacities to reach a military solution, uh, military alone, uh, Europe alone. The solution may be reached only by adopting a cultural decision. It shall depend, and depend on that decision, how the world should, shall see us and how we will be able to arrange our environment at home in new conditions, conditions of coming many migrants, okay, but with, with some concept of solving the problem. Voices of small organizations, as our organization is, shall also play an important role. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for your excellent speech. If you let us... Uh, uh, a uh, question from our audience? You, a, you could thank you. ask. Yes. Uh, oh, yes, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Prime Minister. Uh, uh, my name is Zaland. I'm from Kabul, Afghanistan. Uh, regarding women's rights, what uh, the perception has been given in your speech uh, that West has come to Afghanistan to educate women. Uh, for the past three days that I have been here in this building, when you move out of this building to the ban, there are uh, more than 20 or 30 women standing. 
uh, to uh, uh, yeah, they were standing there to uh, what? To earn, money. to earn money. Excellent. To earn money. They are educated. Yes. And uh, it's too cold there. They, they are they are only in panties standing there. Is it the uh, Western uh, perception of educating women and letting them standing by the road will help Afghans as they have helped has been helping uh, the West? No. It, it really, uh, like, it's, uh, from my perception, from Afghan's perception, it's the m biggest violation of women's rights to let them, uh, not to feed them, let them educate and then let them stand on the, uh, for 24 hours and minus degree, stand them in, uh, on the roads for uh, earn money. There are thousands of places in Western America and everywhere that women are forced, or are forced mentally or socially to, sell their uh, bodies and sex and earn money while they are educated also. The second thing is why Germany is uh, uh, the most, uh, the strongest country of Europe because it's having the biggest uh, population. Uh, uh, all West, every West country like Germany, like Britain, like U US, they have Fulbrighters, Fulbright, they have Chivning, they have Dade, and they do through that brain draining it convinces the uh, third world country like Afghanistan that they should uh, migrate if they are not getting scholarships because uh, uh, they have been given the perception if you go to Germany, if you go to US, if you go to Britain, you will have a better life. So this bringing migrants or causing troubles in the third world countries, uh, invading those countries, Libya was invaded by West, Iraq was invaded by West, Syria is invaded, Afghanistan is invaded, none of Afghanistan. None of Afghans, nobody can find any Afghan that we have asked West to come and educate our women or liberate us. No, uh, uh, there isn't any such kind of evidence. But for uh, invading these countries and letting the migrants to come, I think that's the, there will be, a, for the sake of argument, there will be a perception that if you have more uh, laborers, hu human capital, you will be more uh, developed. 21st century, how to cope with uh, uh, China's development, how to cope with India's development, how to cope with BRICS. Better we have uh, a bigger population because the population ratio or this uh, census is getting smaller. The families within West is getting smaller. Nobody wants ch uh, kids, but the Muslims or those uh, third world country, they bear more uh, kids and that's somehow the culture. So how that culture like borders uh, or uh, somehow disborders or uh, eliminates uh, uh, the world and create problems more. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Uh, first to first part of your question, yes. Uh, in, in the year 2001, when the war in Afghanistan, or war intervention in, in, Afghani in Afghanistan started, I read, uh, yes, among other, uh, other arguments uh, for this intervention, that even the the, by this infer intervention, even the women in, in Afghanistan uh, become the right to be educated. Yes, because before the uh, intervention, as I know, uh, maybe I'm not correct, completely correct, uh, be, because before the intervention, practically Taliban uh, ruled in, in Afghanistan. And, uh, and pro probably... I don't know exactly how was it with the education of women, but uh, probably quite uh, strong, <laughs> yes, limits on the even on on education of women in Afghanistan did exist. Uh, uh, I yes, we all are for education of women, even in Af in Afghanistan, but to force countries. Let's let's speak now in about Afghanistan. Yes. Yes, to force countries to adopt uh, uh, practically all parts of, say, th this time, Western culture uh, led to bad results. Led to bad results, and Afghanistan in, is, no, is now probably, as I, as I have read, uh, under, yes, great territory of, of Afghanistan is again ag uh, under rule of uh, Taliban. And probably with the education of women on these territories is not very, not, not similar as in Europe. Not similar as, as in Europe. And to the second part, 
so th that's why I, I think that this such argumentation for uh, for for our Western our Western even military intervention in other countries this time again Afghanistan is not correct lead leading to nowhere uh, bad to the second part of your of your question uh, of course, <laughs> you have heard I was chairman of the Christian Democratic Party in Slovakia, so I am com definitely I am against uh, this, uh, this the, 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 not argument, but uh, but uh, this women uh, uh, st uh, standing on uh, standing on, on the street. Uh, but uh, I don't know if if the if uh, these women were born say in afghanistan and coming here or or already born here in in europe uh, but b being a part of the minority uh, had bad uh, conditions for education etc et and finding a, an occupation etc but again if they were from afghanistan this this bad bad concept even of western policy i am criticizing now the west uh, led, for example, in Afghanistan to these visions, unrealistic visions, how bad for everybody is uh, in Germany, in, in Europe and especially in Germany. Uh, that was a broad, broad base, base that the, the women came here dreaming about how good life, as the uh, one, one, in one case, it was fulfilled the dream. In the case of the of the wife of uh, pres future American president, yes. <laughs> uh, but back, back, uh, dreaming and c coming here, and reality was completely different. Completely different. So, uh, I'm speaking for changing the Western policy, even. Uh, toward Afghanistan. Okay, so uh, my name is Nikolai. Um, I, I think you're one of the most interesting speakers due to the fact you're actually saying some things that some other people haven't said. In the case of uh, human rights, that's a very interesting topic, and I, I do agree with you uh, when migrants or different people go to different areas, they have to change according to which area they are. So as a personal opinion, I, um, or a narrative, I was born in Romania and I was adopted to America. Now, if I had maintained my Romanian ethnicity in America, this would have totally not gone well with me. So I had to comply to American rules, American ideologies, and change. When we talk about human rights. Human rights is not consistent throughout the whole world. Human rights isn't, uh, a person who comes from a different country should not expect to be treated through their cultural understanding in a different type of culture. And I agree with that. I think that's uh, subjectively true. Uh, if, we, if we vice versa the immigration crisis, and let's say Europeans went to the Middle East, you think the Middle East would have an easy time just uh, collaborating with a different ideology, Christian ideology, Western values, it would change. They would have to change. So I do agree with you that culture does provide that understanding. And it provides the understanding where both immigrants and uh, s uh, settlers of that nation have to col uh, collaborate to figure out a, a good way to do things. And I think we're looking at it from a, our Western value scenario as an aspect of what we believe. We believe that humans have the right to live, to be free, to do this and that, but we also have to consider the, the ideologies other people are bringing in and what their values are. And I, I think it's a very interesting perspective of, uh, you had mentioned Trump uh, being a little more aggressive to actually stopping the immigrants from, or uh, the refugees from coming because it's a conflict in a certain area that's not being resolved, and we, Western powers, have to make up for what another country, another region cannot do for itself. So, uh, so yeah, I, I just want to give my opinion on that 
I think uh, I think you're definitely right on that. Thank you. Uh, I will try what we both have said, <laughs> and coming to the headline of, of my speech, Borders of Cultures, Borders of Human Rights, I had formulated in one sentence so, to stick to uh, own culture and in the same time to respect, to honor the culture of the other, others. Not mix, to mix it. Thank you very much, sir. It's a wonderful <laughs> conclusion for our morning session. One more time, thank you very much for coming now and being promise. with us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> very big round of applause for the Honorable Jan Chernogorsky. Thank you, sir.